Hello, my name is Yenja, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to memorize a hundred digits of pi in less than one day. So who am I to be teaching you this? If you're already subscribed, you know what I'm about. If not, please subscribe now because I'm going to be making a follow-up video on March 14th, which is Pi Day because it's March, which is 3, and 14, which is... 3.14, which is pi. That video might be even cooler than this one. I don't know, let's see. So I'm a memory champion, and you might have seen me do my memory magic on these TV shows. I used this technique with my first ever memory coaching client who was a teenage girl with dyslexia, and she learned 100 digits of pi using a very basic technique in less than an hour, so yeah but no worries if you don't get it in that time it all depends i mean you're not getting professional tutoring from me it might take you more or less time depending on how stressed or how unfocused or focused you are so why memorize pi because it's a fun party trick but it's also a kind of a trojan horse you learn pi and you're like wow i can memorize 100 digits of pi i wonder what else i can do so it's kind of like opening that pandora's box of if I can do this, then what else can I learn, you know? So, and it's also like a fun thing to show. And maybe you guys have school challenges that are asking you, who can memorize the most digits of pi? I actually did have a school challenge. Well, not a school challenge. I was in math class when I was maybe 11. I had a really hard time studying in school. If you if you know anything about me, I had a very hard time focusing on what authoritative figures were telling me to do. So instead of listening to the actual math problem on the board, I saw this other board that was left by another teacher where he had written 300 digits of pi on the board and for some reason I thought it would be much more fun to do that than to listen to whatever it was that she was teaching us. Um, and I still don't remember till this day what she was supposed to teach us. But I really powered through and I looked at the 100 digits in the one hour and I didn't get it so I during that hour, so I kept Googling it. It was a lot. And, and I think I maybe spent like one or two days trying to learn it by using rote memorization. And if you've seen my uh, how to memorize the IKEA catalog video, you know that rote memory is very slow and most of all boring. And it's also not very reliable or sustainable. However, if you know creative memory, which is what I use to win all those medals and go to all those competitions and learn the catalog, etc., you know that the best thing to do is creative memory. So creative memory is more fun and more reliable, and I'm going to try to teach you one or two techniques for how to memorize 100 digits of pi in a creative way. What do you need? I would suggest have something to take notes with, a pen, pencil, or and a paper. Uh, if you don't have that, it's okay to use your computer, laptop, phone, tablet, whatever. But I would say that if you have access to a pen or a pencil slash notepad, it is actually better for you because you learn better when you write it down physically. But don't let perfect be the enemy of done. So don't fret if you don't have that and just do what you can with what you got. The second thing you probably need probably the first thing you need is your mind. And what I mean when I say that is if you're on your laptop, please turn off notifications on your phone. And if you're on your phone, please don't turn off your phone because you need to finish watching this video. But you can also opt to turn off notifications on your phone while you're watching the video and try not to skip around because memory starts with attention. And if you are unable to focus for 10 minutes at a time for one video, I don't know if I can help you that much with how to become a better memorizer. Also, when you have all these notifications on and you're like skipping from tab to tab and looking at this notification and that thing and that news article and that meme, you're tr teaching your brain to not be focused and your brain to like kind of task switch all the time. Whereas when we are memorizing at full capacity, sometimes we have to sit and be focused for what is it, more than three hours at a time sometimes. Let's get into it. To begin with, I taught that girl uh, who learned pi in under an hour, I taught her a very basic technique, which is that you take all the numbers from zero to nine and you decide what each number is. So maybe zero to you looks like a ball and then maybe nine looks like a balloon and maybe Eight looks like a snowman or woman, and seven looks like 
what is the thing that the Grim Reaper has? Maybe that? And you just kind of make the shapes of the numbers 0 to 9 into something that you find fun that comes naturally to you. If somebody says 0 is always a ball and it doesn't feel like a ball to you, then it doesn't have to be a ball. It's all about what makes sense to you and what you will have an easier time remembering. So then she took all these numbers, 0 to 9, and like I think 4 she decided was a sailboat, 5 was a snake, and then 6 was a chair. And by using this, she then used the memory palace technique, which is the ancient technique of putting things in a physical place where you are already familiar with the location, so then you start placing it. So for example, the first three digits of pi is 3.14. So for her, three, if I remember correctly, looks like butt. So she would put a butt on her pillow in her bedroom, and then she would say, one is a candlestick. So then she would just fart on the candlestick and that would make the candle light up, which is super silly, but it worked for her. Then we have four one. And so for four one, four is a sailboat and one is again a candlestick. So then she would put it on her nightstand and say, oh, there's a sailboat coming into that candlestick again. And then poof, crashes into the candle. Basically, she would use that for all of the digits of pi along her house, her room, five, nine. So five is a snake and nine is a balloon. So maybe on the windowsill, she sees a snake becoming a balloon. So you're always trying to combine what you can and you can use three images in one location or two images in one location or one image in one location. It's all up to you what feels natural. I would say two images per location is probably the best to begin with because then you can like combine two digits in one place and not use up as many locations. And then a more advanced technique if you don't want to be using the same 10 digits over and over again would be to memorize it as words. This is similar to the major system but in my opinion a little better. So you basically convert all of the digits 0 to 9 into letters. So for me for example 9 is a G because it looks like a G, 5 is an S because it looks like an S, and B is a, I mean 6 is a B. You can just choose to change those into three consonant words. So you just have three consonants per word. And so two, six, five. So two for me is a, an N, six for me is a B, and five is an S. So two, six, five might be noobs or knobs or nibs. And then for example, maybe I would go to my heater in my bedroom and I would put lots of noobs there. And all these noobs don't know anything about uh, memorizing digits. And then four, six, fem, three, fem, otta. So three, five, eight. So three for me is an M because it looks like a backwards or like a sideways M. And then five is again an S. And then eight, for some reason, I just chose it to be F, V, or W. Then it's M, S, V. So maybe it's massive, massive. We're massive noobs. Or maybe it's moose wine. Whatever is more fun for you to imagine. Massive isn't that fun. Maybe moose wine is better. So these noobs are trying to sell me on the concept of moose wine. Moving on. So why I think this works better than the naive approach of making each digit into an image, it's because this way, instead of 100 digits of pi, you only have to memorize 33-ish objects. That's like learning two or three sentences instead of all these random numbers. And if you think 33 words sounds like a challenge, just think about your favorite song and how many words that song has. You probably know those words by heart and it's probably not something you even have to think about. Yeah, for example, like every Pitbull song has more than 30 words. I mean, most of the words are like Mr. Worldwide, Dale, and other things, but still. Dale, Dale. You get the point. More examples. 979, nine. maybe I would put that on my dresser and that would be 9 is a G and 7 is an L and then 9 is a G again, so 979, nine, I would be Gug. But instead of going Gug, you have to make it into word, right? So maybe I would say it's uh, Glug. 
Maybe somebody's drinking something. Is that a sound people make in English when they drink something? What are they drinking? Three, two, three. Three is an M, two is an N, three is an M again. So M&Ms. Maybe they're drinking a fountain of M&Ms. Very gross, but the grosser, the more fun, the more vivid, the more memorable, basically, that you make your images, the easier it is to remember, usually. You don't have to make it into three consonant words, just as long as each word is the same length. Another idea would be to just make it a two consonant word. And why we are very good at learning with uh, locations is because our brains are really good at understanding spatiality. When we go to a new person's home and you're like, where's the restroom? And they're like, over there. And then you go there. Unless they have a giant house, you're probably gonna find it and you're gonna know where it is. It's not like you wake up every day and you get lost in your own home because we understand spatiality and vivid imagery really well. If you like this video, please let me know by liking it. And if you want to get my Pie Pie shirt in a relaxed fit or a classic t-shirt, you can go to wintersoul.org shop. Let me know what kind of videos you'd be more interested in watching uh, in the comments down below or on my Instagram. Bye!